Okay, I've always wanted to know if we can connect with the field and we can heal ourselves, why do we ever die? So let's answer it from a soul standpoint and let's answer it from a theoretical, philosophical, spiritual standpoint. How's that sound? Okay. Most people die because they're in a genetic program that if you were truly living completely in the present moment, all of your attention and energy were in the present moment, then you would be out of the program. Yes or no? Yes. Where are you? I didn't want to lose contact with you. <laughs> so it would make sense then that when your body is programmed into a predictable future based on what you've did in the past, then it's, it's almost like a predetermined destiny. Yes or no? Yes. Another way to say it is you're rushing to your death. I don't know how else to say that. You get it? So imagine, as I said all week so far, the genes that have been signaled, and certain genes are more hardwired than others. And when you notice that tendency when you're at home and you want to get up and start your day and you got emails and, and you just go, oh, oh, wait a second, and you come back to the present moment, that's unnatural. That goes against the program, and people lose their free will to a program, and all of a sudden now, the will is getting greater than the program, and they're literally changing a line of time. That's what we're doing. Are you with me still? Come on. Yes. So, there's not a lot of evidence that shows that people can be immortal, and yet there's an immortal gene. Cancer cells have the immortal gene signaled a lot of times. So then your will to live has to be greater than your fear of dying. Are you with me still? So then if there's an immortality gene, then on some level it has to be selected and instructed. Yes or no? Yes. And there are fables, whether you believe them or not, historic figures, charismatic leaders, spiritual beings that have overcome death. Are you with me still? Yes. Now I'm sure, oh, here we go, my mother's going to love this. I'm sure that Jesus, you know, the night before his crucifixion, I'm sure he wasn't saying, man, I'm just not up for this. I got a headache. I'm a little anxious. I'm a little worried. He, he, he took it on because that was his initiation. But I came across a book many years ago, a series of books called The Life and Teachings of the Masters from the Far East. Have you read that book? I, I, I can tell you have. And... Um, it was about a researcher named Beard Spaulding who went to the Himalayas. And he was looking for the masters in the, in the Far East. And I was just in my early 20s, and I don't know, I guess I was just hot pursuit of all of that. And I read the book, I, I couldn't stop reading it. I, I read them once and twice and three times because these were the masters that, that really lived in the Himalayas. They didn't need to be in social consciousness. And, they, they would appear in one place and disappear, and the guy would, they would all trek across, and then the guy, the guy would trek across for two days, and the other guy would already be there. And he'd say, oh, I just took my light body over there. I'm just laying down at home. You know, I started going, wow, what is this? Now, it would require then someone who has actually accomplished it to be able to teach it because they would know the journey. Yes or no? And it would have to be ascending to greater, greater levels of energy. And when, theoretically, when all that energy is sitting right in that pituitary gland, and all that energy is in your brain, you know, of all the historic figures of the light around their head, I mean, that's, that's when you're transcendent. Your divinity is greater than your humanity. Are you with me still? So theoretically, there is a... There's a gene for immortality, but it's got to receive the right signal. Now, I don't think that signal is going to be chemical. Just saying <laughs> that the 98.5% of all those genes that can be selected and instructed, my theory is it's going to have to become acted by electromagnetism, a greater frequency than matter because it makes sense then, a coherent signature of energy is, not, is going to be greater to change matter than matter changing matter. Chemistry is slow frequency of matter changing matter. 
Are you with me still? And there's little antennas on receptor sites that pick up the frequency of the chemical as it gets closer, and then the, and then the, the flower just kind of changes, and, then, and the, it, there's a lock and key phenomenon that goes on. It's a vibrational match, but it's very slow frequency. But the receptor sites on the outside of the cells happen to be a hundred times more sensitive, in some references, 200 times more sensitive to electromagnetism than to chemistry. Are you with me still? So nature has a principle called endowment. You know what endowment is? Nature doesn't waste anything. If you don't use it, you lose it, and that's evolution. And yet we have these big brains, we got this storehouse of DNA, and yet we haven't tapped into it. Would you agree? So then if the signal is more energy and it's coherent energy, and the person is raising their frequency and they're above their reactions to their environment, they've mastered fear. They would be out on that course every day until they walked across it with no fear at all. Eyes open, eyes closed, that's just what they would do. Do you understand? But they would need a hierophant. They would need a teacher. They would need someone who crossed that same path to be able to instruct them. So then the soul kind of works intimately with our DNA because at the end of your life, when you die and you leave your physical body, you're a conscious sovereign being and the divine has to get to know how you did. So you as a consciousness, the soul goes, take a seat. Let me just show you the show that we've been watching the whole entire time. And the soul plays back the entire life. But the thing is, is that you're not only experiencing it as you, you're observing yourself and you're experiencing the feelings of how you're affecting everybody else. And all of a sudden, you have these tremendous insights like, oh, oh, oh that didn't go so well. <laughs> or you see that you keep making the same unconscious mistake. And I don't know about you, when I see myself making the same conscious mistake, sooner or later, I want another shot at it. And so the soul goes, well, you want, you, you want to go? Let's go. And you as a conscious being say, I got to go and take care of that. Are you with me still? Yeah. So you descend back into density. You, you, you forget who you were so that you can come back and do it again. And your whole life may be for that one moment where you have to make a different choice. That one moment. That one moment where you have to decide. Are you with me still? Yes. And if you make the choice and you evolve, then of course the experience then begins to change your genetic expression. Are you with me still? And now the soul retires that into wisdom and it keeps it. And that's what you're taking back to the unified field, back to singularity. What you don't own and don't master still has to be dealt with. So then the soul says, okay, let's look for a middle age, let's look for a woman that comes from, uh, that would be in a middle aged, uh, uh, a middle class family and uh, the half Hispanic, half white. Uh, Newark, New Jersey would be a good place. And um, I don't know why, but I'm making this stuff up. And, and um, let's make sure that she gets the pattern in the genes that's equal to the, the soul. And let's set up the conditions in the environment perfectly so that that person can experience where they're limited. Now, if the person is unconscious, then it would make sense then that the person would want to experience what the other person experienced so the soul can go, whoa, I'll never do that again. So in a sense then, it's not the personality that chooses the body or the parents, or it's the soul that chooses it. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if a person gets caught in routine and gets lost in the quagmire of life, then the ego takes over and the soul is diminished. And now the person is doing their best to become a somebody, a someone, own something, be somewhere in some time. And of course, if that's the journey, and the person's not willing to find wisdom or look for truth, then they can play on that level for as long as they want until they're tired of it. And when they finally get bored with it, and they'll, they'll want to choose something else. And eternity is a long time, wouldn't you agree? So then the soul then says, okay, here's the options, probable lines of time. There are probable lines of time that are the more probable than others. And there is a probable line of time for living in the same body and raising your frequency to the point where you can go wherever you want with your body. That's the ultimate, yes or no? Yes. 
and you can whip bread out of nothing, and you can be in two places at once, and you can be on the, the, uh, an alternate universe and have a whole life there, and you can be dimensional. That's, that's the freedom of when you've mastered yourself and you've mastered the conditions. But most of us are headed in a certain timeline based on our genes and based on our own personal evolution. And that's what makes this time right now so powerful. This time right now is the age of information. And in the age of information, ignorance is actually a choice. And people are beginning to realize that I don't need a doctor to find out what my disease is. I don't need to go to the library or talk to my teacher. I can just, I can just find the information. And people are starting to wake up to greater understandings, and that is starting to become the collective. And that collective energy in the field, the collective consciousness, the collective awareness, is changing the future of humanity. Yes or no? Yeah. And at the same time, the past is crumbling. There is economic collapse, there's political collapse, there's religious collapse, there's environmental collapse, there's, there's uh, all of that is breaking down, journalistic collapse. I mean, well, who watches the news and expects to hear the truth? I mean, it's just all falling apart and it's becoming so obvious to people that all of a sudden they're realizing that the people that run the world or people that are in places of power are actually really, really worse off than you and I. And the only thing that has to happen is that we have to collectively become one mind. And when we collectively become one mind, we no longer are seduced by those things. And we are now like a flock of birds all moving in the same direction of those fish, all of a sudden moving as a school. Nobody's leading, everybody's leading. We're just connected. And what do you think we're doing when you tune in to the power of love in this room? Don't you know everybody dialing into that same frequency is causing that frequency to be in this room? And if everybody's doing it, it's getting more collimated, more coherent, more organized. And if you put your attention on it, there's more of it. So then when you're leading with your heart, that's enough. That's enough. So then when you have a collective mind, and people are moving in that way, and they're no longer reacting to politics or whatever, and they no longer need those things, you're catching somebody who's starting to awaken. Yes or no? Yes. And if you're focusing on the divine, and that's where all of your attention is, you won't see ethnicity. You won't see skin color. You won't see anything as separation. You'll just be like, wow, nice costume to the masquerade. I should have <laughs> wore that. It's crazy because then people go get their genetics found out and, you know, some of them, you know, just really have an intolerance to some culture and they're 40% of that culture. <laughs> so, what makes this time for me so unique, and I'm speaking personally, is that there's such a quickening going on. More things are happening in a shorter amount of time. Would you agree? Yeah. And if more things are happening in a shorter amount of time, it becomes more difficult to predict the next moment. This point we're reaching, this nodal point, is the point of in unpredictability, and the old is collapsing. And the collapsing of the old should never be faced with fear, with bigotry, with, with, with anger, with hostility, with guilt, sadness, and shame, because that's how we've been controlled all along. And by the way, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but if you want to control people, manipulate their emotions. So as we move closer and closer to that point, the probability of us changing our life, the length of our life, not from low-stress foods and not from vitamins, all those things are good, matter to matter. But stress is going to downregulate the gene, consume the body's energy, and now that's going to begin to signal the gene to produce the disease that the person has inherited in the first place. Are you with me still? So when you react to someone or something and you're living by the same emotional state, you keep the same genes on, the same genes off, and that's your genetic destiny. And now the awakening of this, even if, even if we changed little timelines just this week, we changed lines of time, you change something about yourself, you are going to walk into a different future that is your genetic timeline. And now you're bumped off course. You just got to be willing to stay in the unknown and be comfortable with it. 
And that's when you're at your greatest. Are you with me still? Yes. So we're moving point towards that point where more and more things are becoming more difficult to predict as the old collapses. And all of a sudden, the leaders that run the world are being exposed. Mm -hmm. And now people are starting to unify and saying, I don't believe anything any longer. What do I do believe in? I believe in me. What do I do believe? I believe in you because we're a tribe now. We're, we're a mini culture. And I was with um, the owner of Gaia, uh, Gaia, Gaia, what is it called now? Gaia, Gaia TV, I don't know what it is. And he's a really smart guy. And we were talking about this, and, he, and we were saying, there's too many pockets, cultures of people that are waking up around the world too hard to take them out now. Yeah. Can't happen now. It's happening too fast. Yeah. And so we have to be able to face the collapse of all of those paradigms from a greater level of mind. We have to say, thank God it's fallen away, but let's not do the same again. Let's do something differently. Let's do it differently. And you know what? We'll create our own culture. We'll create our own government. We'll create a whole other way of being. We'll create something better. And if you study Buckminster Fuller, what did he say about changing the world? You don't go in there and try to change that. You create something better, and everybody leaves that and goes over there. That's how it's going to work. Are you with me still? And I know this to be the case because I'm in the world of healthcare. And this, even five years ago, physicians would be like, and now they're like, hey, whatever you're doing, you're making me look good. Just keep going, man. I don't have to, write, I don't have to spend any more time with you. I got to get to the next person and write the next prescription. They're like, you, you did that? Oh, that's awesome. I really... I wish all my patients were like you. <laughs> that's, that's how the collective is moving. And if the collective moves, it's not the coming of a Christ like a, you know, Jesus in his sandals or in a Harley or whatever you see. <laughs> it's not that. It's a collective consciousness that is altruistic, that loves one another, that takes care of one another, that stops, uh, we're the only species that murders one another. That's, that's going to fall away. That's the nodal point. That's the choice point that either we move through that or we head back and we reproduce the same thing and who knows what will happen to this world. This is, and by the way, you can't be a victim about this because you negotiated to be here. You negotiated for this moment and you know what? I've been to those alternate places enough that I know that I'm eternal. So, if you know you're eternal, why not just go all in? You just get another body and you say, wow, whoa, I'm a little different than the last one. <laughs> and you would be less prejudiced, I assure you. Are you with me still? Yes. So this is a collective moment. And it is a group consciousness moving uh, towards one place. And I want you to know, you have no idea with what you're doing right now, how it's changing the future of many, many people. Are you with me still? And to me, that makes all the lost luggage and the missed flights, <laughs> all of those crazy things uh, uh, worth it. And of course, then there's genetic engineering. And if you really dig into it, you'll see that there are a lot of weird things going on when people start mixing genes. A lot of crazy things. So then we have to become our own genetic engineers. And if you could assign meaning to what you're doing and understand that every time you change your emotional state and you reach for the divine and you unfold and you fall on into nothing and you let go and trust in that intelligence, it moves closer to you. And don't you know that when you begin to interact with it, it will have its way with you. And those experiences that happen outside of three-dimensional reality will signal genes. And those genes of mastery, those genes that have to be activated in order for us to really transcend the conditions that are, that are being presented to us. And that's my vision, by the way. That's why I love doing what I do. Anyway, that's the short answer. <laughs>